Hello, this is uh, Shackleton, of course, and uh, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, or a couple videos, I'm going to talk about sudden stratospheric warmings. Okay, this is a phenomena where cold air comes up from the lower atmosphere, the troposphere, and goes right up into the stratosphere. And it warms the stratosphere, and it cuts into the polar vortex and um, so it basically disrupts it. The hot air moves up, that displaces cold air, which moves down. The jet streams um, move, they move uh, towards the uh, equator, equatorward. You know, uh, mostly this phenomena happens in the northern hemisphere because you need some sort of force or impetus to drive that warm air from the lower atmosphere up to the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere. And there's lots of terrain and continents in the Northern Hemisphere. So it happens fairly often, the, the, this effect in the winters. Um, but in the Southern Hemisphere, we've got the continent of Antarctica with high elevation, especially with the ice on it. So going up to four kilometers high, 4,000 meters. And we have the polar vortex in the stratosphere sort of circling um, the continent. So Basically, the location of the uh, vortex edges are over the uh, water. And of course, there's no terrain, there's no impetus to drive any of the warm air from below up into the stratosphere. But that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. There's been some very rare occasions where it has happened, for example, in uh, 2002 and also in 2010. But what we've been seeing very recently is we've been seeing an unprecedented event, unprecedented in terms of it's got strong very quickly early on um, in, in, in uh, September. So I'm going to talk all about the details of this event. And what it means is that the um, regions where the jet streams move to get uh, basically colder and uh, wetter. And uh, so that's like New Zealand and uh, the tip of South America, Patagonia. And if you go a bit further north of that, you generally, you generally get a lot of heat and uh, drought. So this, uh, this phenomena is happening right now in the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm going to just talk about the details of it. And Shackleton's getting restless. He wants to um, take off. Okay. Okay, so basically, this, um, this shows uh, the Antarctica continent, and this is a temperature map at 10 millibar, very, very high up in the atmosphere. Anything dark red and white is above zero. So you can see this region here where the temperature, you know, very, very high up in the atmosphere actually goes above zero. Generally, the temperature will be, you know, um, in this region here, this is what you'd expect right over the continent, you know, minus 70, minus 80. So this, is, this represents a rise of about 80 degrees Celsius in the upper atmosphere over this region. So this is a very interesting phenomena. And like I said, I'm going to go into all of the, the details of this. So first of all, a little plug for my website, paulbeckwith.net. Um, I did a series of five videos on Arctic sea ice. Um, so make sure that you uh, check those out. Um, you know, I talked all about what's happening um, as we near the end of the melt season in the Arctic. But now I'm at the South Pole. Uh, I'm talking all about Antarctica and sudden stratospheric warming events. So this is uh, Earth Null School. Um, so go just Google Earth Null School, select air, select wind. And um, the date here is, I've set it to August 21st. And if you do apply, that allows you to, this is a new feature um, in Earth Null School to allow you to pick dates, you know, going through the record of, of the data that exists. So it's a very good feature, making it easy to scroll through different dates to look at phenomena. Okay, so here is where we are. Um, and this is uh, August 21st. Now I'll cycle through days and what you can see is that the, the vortex here 
and you can see the continent uh, Antarctica underneath and how the vortex is a little bit offset um, from, it, from, from the pole here. It's offset this way. Okay, so now I'm going to cycle through a day at a time. So it's very, very circular here, August 24th, 25th. And what you can see is another loop beginning to form here. Okay, and it's strengthening. So the vortex is splitting into two uh, loops, basically, two patterns. And here, so we've got quite strong pattern forming here. This is the end of August, August 31st, and uh, September 1st. Okay, and you can see the very strong loops. There's actually three here now. Okay, this is day to day. I'm cycling through day to day. Very strong secondary loop. Okay, coming to basically present day. Okay, so we've got a very, very split vortex. We've got two vortices here that are meshing like gears. Let's go back to the 21st where I started before. Okay, and let's look at the temperature now. <clears throat> Okay, so here's the temperature. It's about minus 83 in the center. Over here, minus 40, and here, minus 40 or so, minus 36. Okay, so let's look, let's cycle through the days and see what's happening. Okay, so it's quite circular. We've got the other loop forming here. Okay, and let's look at the temperature in here. So just below zero here. Here it's still minus 76, you know, minus 80 roughly. And here it's almost uh, approaching zero al already. And don't forget, this is, at, this is at 10 hexapascal, which is very, very high up in the atmosphere. So we'll continue going. And, uh, you know, so just uh, below zero, so October 29th. Okay, let's go back a bit here. What's this? 3.2 degrees. See the green? Anywhere you see green here, it's above zero. So we can see we're already going above zero here. Okay, maybe in here you can see regions. So I'm cycling through. What is it here? close to zero. Just above zero. And this is the tenth. Look at this. This whole region here is above zero. Okay, this is what I was showing on the introductory screen. Okay, this is September 10th. Right, it's reaching 13 degrees Celsius. So you could go right up into the upper atmosphere there. And instead of the temperatures here of minus 50 is the coldest regions here, you can see temperatures of 13 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is the phenomena. Okay, so let's try to explain some of this. So. Go to Arctic sea ice graphs. There's actually, and click on the graph There's and scroll through. You can see stuff on the sea ice. So this is Antarctica sea ice, West Antarctic, East Antarctica. And what you can see here is there's a lot of ice missing here from the norm. This is a median ice edge, 1981 to 2010, the brown line. And what you can see is there's lots of sea ice missing here. There's an excess of sea ice in this region and the other regions fluctuate above and below, you know, the normal ice edge. So ice is missing here, ice, there's extra ice here. This causes an asymmetry. So the polar vortex that circles here, I believe what happens is it starts to get offset and it starts to get elongated. So instead of just circling with the vortex, um, experiencing no terrain, just experiencing the ocean. As it starts to elongate over Antarctica, it starts to interact with the elevation on the continent, and that starts to split it up. That gives uh, upward momentum to some of that air, so it then rises right up into the stratosphere and splits the vortex. This is another image of sea ice concentration showing the 
loss, the, the uh, ice missing here and the excess here. Um, and I think that's enough to shift the vortex a little bit, make it more elongated, and then it interacts with the high elevation land and ice, high elevation ice, which is about four kilometers high over Antarctica and starts to um, interfere. So here's the sea ice extent. Um, 2019 was very, very low um, and it's come up a little bit, but 2018 was a, a record minimum. So I would expect that if this uh, sudden stratospheric warming phenomena in the southern hemisphere is mostly because of the uh, asymmetric loss of sea ice around Antarctica that I would expect we would see more of these um, sudden stratospheric warming events. Let's look at the topography of Antarctica. So, you know, just go to Google Images and look at topography of Antarctica and I get various images here. Um, so let's have a look. Um, first of all, this is an elevation map of Antarctica. So this is sea level, this is 4,000 meters or four kilometers, two kilometers. So this whole region in East Antarctica is, is uh, approaching, like it's four kilometers here and you know, it's over uh, three, three and a half kilometers, this whole red region. The yellow is more like about three kilometers high. And then we get down to sea level, of course, around the coast. And this region here is very low lying. So that's the kind of topography. So as long as the vortex is circling um, Antarctica, you know, it's seeing basically flat terrain. If it starts to shift because of the ice, it starts going over uh, this type of terrain. And as it's coming this way, it obviously gets huge uplift as it rises in the elevation and that propels it. The momentum carries it up into the stratosphere, um, which is only about seven or eight kilometers high. And this is about four kilometers high. So then it um, basically cuts into the, the stratospheric polar vortex, splits it, causes a lot of warm air to go up, a lot of cold air to come down. And that cold air gets carried by the jet streams to um, regions like New Zealand, uh, which had record low temperatures, the coldest it had been in 20 years in 2002 because of a similar phenomena happening. Um, if you go to here, this is the terrain um, in a relief map. So we've got East Antarctica here, high elevation, West Antarctic here. So as long as the vortex is circling here, it's okay. As long as it, you know, it starts to elongate and move a little bit, it starts to get this vertical momentum up and it goes up into the stratosphere, causes the warming. So that's the basic gist of what we see here. Um, this is a uh, Google Climate Reanalyzer and we're having a look at the two meter temperature anomalies and you can see this whole region here. What it does with this sudden stratospheric warming event is it really messes up the temperature over the continent. So you get these really cold areas here and you get these very warm areas here. This is at the surface. So there's obviously effects from the upper atmosphere vortex splitting right down to um, the, the, uh, right down to the surface of, of the ice. Now, um, this is uh, my Twitter feed at Paul H. Beckwith. Please uh, make sure you follow me. If you're not, I follow you back. And I've been tweeting, uh, well, this, I've been looking at a lot of things to do with Antarctica. The, the glaciers melting much faster than we realize. This is um, uh, a dark room in Scott's historic hut at Cape Evans, Antarctica. So this stuff here, many of the early photographs of Antarctica were developed in this, in this dark room. So it's pretty much been left like it was 100 years ago. This is another view, a uh, seal blubber that's been sitting for 100 years. And uh, you know, these are, this is a stack of dead emperor penguins from a hundred years ago and some of the tools that people use back there. So because it's up in the Antarctica, people that have gone there and visited, they respect it and they just keep it the way, the way it is. Um, this is, uh, you know, we see a lot of Antarctica in maps like this and it looks enormous. This is a, a different view, um, Antarctica centric, showing Antarctica, you know, and you can compare it to the size of Australian continent here, South America, you know, Africa, uh, Asia, and so on. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, continue this in, a, in uh, another video. Um, so thank you uh, for listening.